Why are some nations wealthier than others? Well, world systems theory seeks to answer this. It states that it's the result of exploitation of the poor by the rich nations of the world rather than innate social economic characteristics of each. And also that economic development occurs when one group purposefully increases its own wealth at the expense of others. According to world systems theory, the wealthy countries of the world achieve high levels of development by exploiting other regions, plundering their resources, using their people as cheap sources of labor, and dominating their markets. It posits that both the rich and poor nations of the world are really part of the world system, and that economic development is not the result of an enlightened or progressive population, but of exploitation. When we start to look at developed nations versus undeveloped nations, modernization theory makes some assumptions that we'll now examine. It assumes that in order for undeveloped nations to become developed, they must engage in activities more like developed ones. It makes the same assumptions as the cultural poverty view, that is, it says that poor people pass certain cultural features to their children that tend to reinforce and perpetuate poverty. Modernization approach suffers from ethnocentric assumptions. It takes as a given the fact that all peoples in the world want to become modern. It overestimates the extent to which some non-Western people resist modernization and it assumes that traditional people will be better off if they become modern. But let's examine this. There have been anticipated benefits of economic development, but many of them have turned out to be illusory. They can often result in the increase of disease for four reasons. Modern lifestyles bring about new diseases. The incidence of certain bacterial or parasitic diseases increases, environmental degradation, and health problems. Studies suggest that economic growth and development do not always lead to improvement in people's lives. It may lower the quality of life through greater poverty, longer working hours, overpopulation, poorer health, more social pathology and environmental degradations. The increase in diseases, diseases found in developed nations happens oftentimes too. Increases in things like diabetes, heart disease, obesity, hypertension, gout, high blood pressure. Also that rapid urbanization creates health related problems through contagious diseases, poor nutrition and unsanitary conditions. In talking about globalization, we also have to talk about indigenous populations. Indigenous populations refers to a group of people who are the original inhabitants of a region. They identify with a specific small-scale cultural heritage. They have no significant role in the government. And examples would be the small-scale cultures in Asia, Africa, and the Americas under influence of the colonial powers during the past several centuries. Indigenous populations have been affected negatively by the onslaught of civilization. The cultural patterns and sometimes the people themselves have been eradicated. The Industrial Revolution and the explosions in population and consumerism had negative effects in that the colonizing countries needed to control and exploit natural resources. A major motivation for the colonization of, non of the non-Western world was economic 
and that the natural resources found in Asia and Africa were needed to fuel European factories. A major example of harm to indigenous peoples and colonization that resulted was the Berlin Conference in 1884-1885 that divided up the African continent's natural resources for European nations without any indigenous peoples being a part of this process or part of the decision making. It didn't protect the rights of indigenous nations. The 21st century has presented additional challenges to the cultural survival of indigenous populations. In 2007, this leader of a group of Yanomamo Indians from the Amazon region presented to German Chancellor Merkel a letter urging Germany to sign Convention Number 169 concerning protecting the rights of indigenous and tribal peoples living in independent countries. Biropiracy is where outsiders, most often the employees of corporations, come into an area and extract the biological resources of indigenous peoples that they've been stewarding as a part of their cultural traditions. Cultural anthropologists document the demise of indigenous people, but also use their specialized knowledge to help these endangered cultures to survive. Other global issues, climate change. Most scientists agree that climate change is caused by global warming. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPPC, founded by the United Nations, provides a view on the current state of climate change. Scientists say that as evidence of global or climate change and global warming is that greenhouse gases have increased sea levels have risen, the Earth's average temperature has risen. They point to the Republic of Kiribati that has lost a large percentage of its land to rising seas, and another case of people in El Alto, Bolivia, who are suffering from water shortage due to the loss of glaciers. So given all of the challenges posed by globalization and the history of colonialism, what's appropriate response? Many people argue multiculturalism is the way. It's a public policy philosophy that recognizes legitimacy and the equality of all cultures in a society. Many people maintain that it's the most sensible foreign policy strategy for interacting with other peoples of the world. It recognizes and requires awareness that people from other cultures who do not share our cultural assumptions probably do not sympathize with some of our behaviors, ideas, and values. To enhance the dignity and respect of other people and other cultural choices, we must have multiculturalism proponents say, rather than deliberately trying to eradicate cultural differences, a more workable approach is some type of multiculturalism. Culturally different people are not inherently perverse or immoral. Multiculturalism remains the best hope for enabling all people to have the security, prosperity, and freedom they desire and deserve.